Hello everyone, it's Spawnpoint and we are back with another Top New Games video, where we get to take a look at some of the best upcoming games to be released, and this time it's for November 2023. We've certainly had a few busy months recently, and this one looks to be no different. So sit back, grab your favourite drink or snack, and let me know which games you are most hyped for this month. Okay, so I'm going to kick today's video off with probably one of the most popular games, and one a lot of us know is a bit of a guilty pleasure, and that's Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. So this follows on from last year's MW2, and is the third in the reboot and the 20th instalment in the entire series. Can you believe this has been going for 20 years? Now I'm not sure how many of you play Call of Duty, but it's one that I get hyped for every single year. So firstly, the campaign is set to take place directly after MW2, and although it features similar characters including Price, Ghost and Soap, the story itself is brand new. It's not the same as the 2011 game under the same name, so we are getting something fresh. Then of course there's the multiplayer modes, which let's face it is probably the main reason most of us will buy it. From the beta and the footage that we've seen so far, it looks like it's taken a step in the right direction with some old classic features. Things like the red dot on the minimap, slide cancel and even map voting in the lobby. We're also getting 16 of the original maps from MW2, plus 12 brand new ones. But it's definitely the original maps that I am really looking forward to playing. Terminal is going to be awesome. Then on top of the multiplayer mode, there will be an open world zombies mode, where you can have up to 24 players in a single game. This is larger than any zombie map that we've ever seen before, and I can imagine this being absolutely carnage out there. So MW3 launches on November 10th across all platforms, including PS4, PS5, Xbox and PC. But if you pre-order the digital version, you will get to play the campaign a week early on November 2nd, so enough time to finish the campaign before getting sidetracked with multiplayer. And then if you fancy tearing it up on the dirt or in the snow, we have EA Sports WRC, which launches on November 3rd. This brings us a new instalment in the classic World Rally Championship games that we've had for many years, but with some new modes and new features, plus it's been developed by the team behind the Dirt Rally series, and from what we've seen so far, this looks really promising. The visuals look great with incredible realism, and Codemasters have said themselves that it features some of the biggest tracks that they've ever created. On top of that, the sounds of these cars are awesome. So we get the campaign mode where we get to progress through the career, either as a junior or a full-blown WRC driver. We can also customise and build a rally car from the ground up, including the drivetrain, mechanical and body features, which all have an impact on the car and how it handles. Of course, there's also the choice of over 80 normal rally cars to pick from as well. So the races are set across 17 locations and over 200 stages. But not only do we have the traditional stage rally mode, there's a new one called Regularity Rally, where you're timed on your average speed and not timed per stage. And if you did pre-order this game, you will have got early access on October 31st. But for the rest of us that are maybe buying it physically, it launches on November 3rd on Xbox Series, a PS5 and PC. Next up is Robocop Rogue City. Now, if you like your 80s or early 90s movies, this one could be for you. So it's set in 2043 and follows the same character as the original movies, Alex Murphy. So you play as a cop who was gunned down and essentially brought back to life as a superhuman cyborg, also known as Robocop. Now this is a first person shooter, but what makes it great is your armor and your weapons are incredibly overpowered. So it looks ridiculously fun to play. I like the fact that they've stuck with the 80s vibe too. So although it's set in the future, it still has that 80s look. Now from the gameplay that we've seen so far, this looks slow and heavy and not like any FPS game that we've had recently, but I think that's what makes it look great. It's something different to the norm and I think this will be a lot of fun. It's also built on Unreal Engine 5, so the visuals look pretty impressive. So Robocop Rogue City launches on November 2nd, and that's coming to PS5, Xbox Series and PC. The next game we've got to take a look at is The Day Before. I actually remember seeing this trailer back in 2021, and it kind of reminded me of the movie I Am Legend. It's got that post-apocalyptic setting, and it also looks quite cinematic, which immediately got my attention. So it's an open-world MMO survival game set in a world that has been destroyed by a virus. You will need to explore, scavenge, and fight off hordes of zombies who are roaming the streets. But it's not just zombies, there are also other survivors that you need to protect yourself from, which, let's face it, we all know is the real threat here. Now the visuals on this look absolutely incredible, and it's giving me the Last of Us meets Alan Wake 2 vibes. And as long as the gameplay is as good as the visuals, I think we're in for a real treat. It also looks dark and moody, and I can imagine this being pretty scary as well. So it was originally going to launch back in March of this year, but it was delayed. Firstly, it's going to be coming to PC on November 10th, and although there are plans for it to come to the PlayStation 5 and Xbox, this date has yet to be confirmed. 
But I can tell you now, as soon as we get a date for the PlayStation 5, I'm definitely picking this up. On November 6th, we get a new game called The Invincible. This is a first-person sci-fi game set in the future, and it's based on a Polish novel under the same name. From the gameplay and the trailer that we've seen so far, it's got a retro style to it, which I think gives it a Fallout vibe. It's that post-apocalyptic, futuristic setting with a nod to the past. Now, to be honest, very little has been shown online about this, so it's difficult to know exactly what the story is about. But that is one of the reasons I have included it in today's video. I think this could be a real sleeper and one that deserves a little more hype. So you play as a scientist and you need to explore the alien planet Regis 3 as you're searching around for your missing crew, picking up tools and accessories as you go. And as it is an alien planet, expect to see other forms of life as you explore. So The Invincible launches on November 6th on PS5, Xbox Series and PC. And next up is a remake of an incredible game which is Super Mario RPG. So this originally launched back in 1996 on the SNES and has to be one of the best RPG games of that generation. Well, 26 years later, we have a remake for the Switch. We get to team up and play the classic heroes, including Mario, Bowser and Peach, to save Star Road from the Smithy Gang. Now at this stage, we've only seen a handful of trailers and gameplay so far. And although the gameplay systems are mostly the same, the fact that it's a remake means we get these stunning new visuals and art. I mean, just look how nice this looks. So if you've got a Switch and you like Mario, well who doesn't, this is going to be a definite pickup. It launches on November 17th and will be exclusive to the Switch. If you're looking for an action role-playing game, we have Star Ocean The Second Story R. This is a remake of the classic RPG which first launched in 1998. And although it is a remake, they've still kept the same look just by enhancing the visuals. So it stays true to the original art style, but the scenarios for the towns and dungeons have been remade in 3D, which gives us this pretty unique style. Now the visuals on this actually look really good, and if you enjoy the original, this is a worthy remake. On top of that, the entire combat system and battle mechanics have been revamped and built from the ground up, so the combat should be tighter and feel a little more modern. Personally, I think this is one of the best in the series, and Star Ocean The Second Story R launches on November 2nd, and it's coming to PS4, PS5, Switch, and PC. And if you like the previous Persona games, you'll be pleased to hear we're getting another spin-off, this time Persona 5 Tactica. It's an SRPG, or a tactical role-playing game, which is set around the same time as Persona 5. It actually runs concurrently to that game. This is a grid-based, turn-based strategy game where you can team up and take out the enemies using up to three party members. As for the art style and vibrancy, it's something that I think looks great, although it is different to that of some of the previous games, so I can imagine you'll either love or hate this style. Persona 5 Tactica launches on November 17th on almost all platforms, including PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC. Right, so I'm a huge fan of The Walking Dead. I've watched the entire series and played the Telltale games, so naturally I had to include the upcoming Walking Dead Destiny's game. Now, it is worth mentioning that the visuals and graphics of this game are pretty bad, like we're talking PlayStation 3 level of graphics here. But with that said, the idea behind the game sounds awesome. So this is an adaptation of the AMC TV series, including seasons 1 to 4. You start off by playing as Rick and you can decide whether you want to follow the original path of the TV series or make your own path. Literally making decisions about who lives and who dies, it will change the storyline entirely. There will be familiar scenes, locations and characters throughout, which for anyone who's enjoyed the TV series, I think this will be a fun game to play, if you can look past the graphics. So The Walking Dead Destinies releases on November 14th on PC, PS4, PS5, Xbox and Switch. Okay, so we're getting near the end, but I couldn't not include Tintin. Over the years, we've had comics, TV series, and loads of movies, and now games. So this one is called Tintin Reporter Cigars of the Farrah, and it's the fourth adventure in the series. You play as Tintin alongside his companion Snowy as you explore Egypt and India, uncovering those hidden secrets inside the tomb. Now, this is a puzzle adventure game, which appears to have stayed pretty faithful to the original character style and storyline. And it is one of the most vibrant games that we've seen today, and it looks like it could be a lot of fun to play. So Tintin Reporter Cigars of the Farrah drops on November 7th, and that's coming to PS4, PS5, Xbox, Switch, and PC. And a few other games that are worth mentioning include Hogwarts Legacy. This originally launched back in February, but it's finally coming to the Switch on November 14th. Then we have Football Manager 2024, which releases on November 6th. I'm more of a FIFA or EAFC kind of guy, but if you prefer the manager side of football, this one's for you. There's also the infamous Power Wash Simulator, which is coming to Meta on November 2nd. I've not actually played any of these games, but they look incredibly satisfying, so I can imagine playing this in VR will be pretty cool. 
And another VR game we have is Assassin's Creed Nexus. This will be launching exclusively on MetaQuest 2 and 3 on November 16th, and from the gameplay we've seen, this looks good. And you didn't think I'd forget to mention the most anticipated game of 2023, and that's Bluey. So make sure you clear your diaries on November 17th as it's coming to Xbox, a PlayStation, and Switch. So that was a quick roundup of some of November's new games, and it's looking good. It's nowhere near as busy as October for those big releases, but there are a few titles in here that will keep us busy through the next few months of winter. I know I probably didn't include every game that you wanted to see, as can you believe that there are actually over 100 new games launching in November. So tell me, what games are you most hyped for this month? Now drop a nice November games in the comments, and I'll give you a thumbs up for staying right till the end. And if you did enjoy today's video, check out my PS5 3 years later review video next. Thanks for watching, please like, sub and follow me everywhere. Until next time.